In this section, I'm going to be looking at object orientation in quite a bit more detail. And in particular, I'm going to talk about how to create class hierarchies. Let's have a look at this uh, sample project, BookObs. So here I've got three types of books that I can have in my catalog, general fiction, horror, and reference. I'm going to implement these as classes, and I'm going to create a hierarchy. But let me first show you how this works. So I put in a book title. This is a general fiction book. I add it. Then I create, uh, let's see, I make the next one a horror book. I give it a go score, five, add that, and finally a reference book. type of reference and add that and then I show all my books and it shows that I've got one general book, one horror book and one reference book. And the reference book has a book type which is not defined by the general book and the horror book has a go score which is in neither of the other two books. So let's see how I've implemented this. So here's my simple class hierarchy. First of all, I've created bookob, which defines the basic book type. This is a subclass of T object. T object is the base class of all other classes. I could delete this uh, referenced T object in this case, just put it as class, and it would automatically be a T object. But for clarity in this first look at class hierarchies, I put the T object specifically to show that it's the direct ancestor, the base class of bookob. And bookob just has two variables, name and author, and they're the book string data type. And there are some methods. There, I look at the methods shortly. There's one that creates a bookob, one that destroys it, and one that returns a description. But I want to look at the two descendant classes next. Horror bookob is defined as a descendant of bookob. That is, bookob is the base class, its direct ancestor. So horror bookob automatically inherits name and author. It doesn't need to declare them again. And it just adds on the difference, the new feature, which in this case is go score. And ref bookob, that's the reference book object. That again inherits name and author because its base class is bookob. It doesn't need to redefine those. And it adds on the new feature, which is ref type, so that I can put in which sort of reference book, history, biology, etc. Notice that each of my three classes contains one function called describe, which returns a description of the data in that class. And I'll look at that in a separate video. But it also contains a constructor, create, and a destructor, destroy. We've, of course, used the create constructor for existing classes in previous projects when we create a new object, we call the create constructor. In this project, I've added my own special constructors because each class needs to initialize its own special data fields. So bookob wants to initialize the name and author variables. Horror bookob needs to initialize name, author, and a go score and ref bookob needs to initialize name, author, and ref type. Now, of course, the name and author are only defined in the bookob class, not specifically in the descendant classes. So how are those fields initialized? For sake of simplicity, for ease of navigation, I have put all the constructors together in this project, normally, of course, in a real-world program, you would put all the constructors of each class along with the methods and other details relating to that specific class. So it, I'd probably put bookob in its own file, and all its methods would be there, and horror bookob would have its own separate code file, and all its methods would be there, and so on. 
But for this project, I've put all the constructors together so I can move quickly from one to the other and show you the differences. So let's start with the base class, Bookob. Well, this takes two parameters, a name and an author, and it just assigns those to the fields, to the variables, name and author. That's straightforward. Before doing that, it calls inherited create. What does that do? That just calls the constructor of the ancestor class, which in this case is just T object. So that sets aside any memory required for the class, and it would initialize any special fields of the class. Here there are no fields that I need to initialize when I call the inherited create of bookob, that's T object. But look what happens when I go to horror bookob, which is, remember, a descendant of bookob, of my class. This calls inherited create with a name and an author. So what this does is it calls bookob create. Bookob create is responsible for initializing name and author. So horrorbookob doesn't need to worry about that. It just defers the initialization of those fields to its base, its ancestor class, bookob. Then it simply initializes the field that it adds on to the bookob class when it inherits from it, and that's goal score. And refbookob does much the same. It calls inherited create with a name and an author again, so that defers the initialization to its base class, bookob, and then it just deals with its own specific field, which is ref type. And along the way, I've printed out some details into the list box, but that's not fundamental to the way that these constructors work. You should always call inherited to call the base constructor, and you should do that before initializing any fields in the current class, in the current uh, descendant object. Now let's have a look at the destructors. Destructors will execute when the when free is called. Free is the way that you normally clean up a, a, an object. You normally destroy an object when you're finished with it, and free automatically calls the destroy constructor. So in Bookob, I just initialize the internal fields to empty, empty strings in this case, and right at the end, I call inherited destroy. I should point out, by the way, that really I don't need to worry about cleaning up things like strings and integers. But when you are dealing with complex objects, which may themselves contain other objects, then it's good practice to call the destructors of each object that might be an internal field to another object. So, for example, if I had a myob field in the bookob, then I would call myob.free before calling inherited destroy. At any rate, it's good practice to get used to creating your own destructors and making sure that any internal data is properly freed, and then finally call inherited destroy at the end. So that's a simple overview of constructors and destructors and how to write them and the way of calling them in your own code.